How do you design a bike that is so classic they put it in a museum when it's still in production? How do you develop a shape so seductive that Carl Fogarty is scared to put a scratch in it? And how do you outline features so impactful that they still define a brand almost 30 years later? Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you how Massimo Tamburini styled his masterpiece. Year after year, the Ducati 916 is voted one of the best looking bikes ever made. For many of us, its shapes are timeless and they took the motorcycle world by storm when they were first unveiled in the early 90s. But they did not fall out of thin air. If you look at its predecessors, the 851 and the 888, you will already notice some key features. The L-twin and the trellis frame, which will give the 916 its slim shape and delicate structure. The Ducati Red, which will become symbolic for the company as a whole, and if you look closely, you can see some very similar air scoops on the side fairings. The biggest leap in terms of visual design, however, came with the Supermono, a very exclusive single-cylinder race bike released in 1993. The front end, tank, and the seat section look very similar on both bikes, and here's the kicker, it was designed by Pierre Terblanche. Yes the man who would later design the very controversial 999. Quite a twist, isn't it? The 916, of course, was designed by no other than the grand Massimo Tamburini. He was a TA in Bimota before joining Kajiva as head of design, and Kajiva at the time owned Ducati. When he was working on the 916, he looked for inspiration not just in Italy, but also across the pond, especially at the Honda NR750, which used the one-sided swing arm, the double headlights, and the underseat exhaust before the 916. If I remember correctly, Honda even sued Ducati for the one-sided swing arm, but lost in court, which ruled that something so fundamental cannot be attributed to one manufacturer alone. Whichever way you put it, I think that these features don't come together quite as well on the NR750. The 916 looks like that Honda, like say a Ferrari, looks like a Toyota. They may have taken inspiration, but they turned that into something balanced, beautiful, and eventually timeless. Tamburini himself once said that he was actually an engineer and only became designer because Bimota couldn't afford one. That's like James Hetfield saying in the 90s he was only filling in at Metallica until they found a proper singer. But maybe that's exactly the reason why they were able to make something so fast, so beautiful. The stroke of genius that Tamburini applied was to draw the lines of the spike along the shapes of a woman. The front end was meant to emulate the bust, the tank, the upper body and the seat, the hips and every single component had to fulfill this artistic vision. 
The end result was so well balanced that they call this bike a Ferrari on two wheels, but I don't think that's quite right. This is somewhere between a 40 and a GTO. It is the Ferrari on two wheels. <laughs> Much like Enzo Ferrari built his cars to go fast on track first and foremost, the beautiful fairings only make up half the appeal here. If you look at the bike from this angle, you can see enough raw technology exposed to leave any engineer drooling. The huge rim, these exhaust and the exhaust line, the shock and the one-sided swing arm. It's like dressing a girl in the most expensive gown ever just to leave all the important parts hanging out in just the right places. This bike is not style of a substance. This is form and function in most sublime unison. Trying to sum up the impact this design had on the motorcycle world is like looking up the term icon in a dictionary. It featured on the front page of every bike magazine that year, it went to the Guggenheim Museum of Modern Art, and even Carl Fogarty said that the first time he saw this he was scared to push it for fear of crashing something so pretty. Tamburini went on to design the F4 750 for MV Agusta. Some people say the F4 looks even better, but in my opinion, if you look at the one-sided swing arm, the underseat exhaust and the slim line, you will see that the F4 is really much more of an evolution of exactly the same thing. And even Ducati have been impacted by these shapes until today. The 916 series was in production for a whopping 10 years. The 999, its successor, was really not as successful because it didn't look as good. And so Ducati went back to what worked and they have stayed with that until today. Now, most people would show you footage of the V4, but this is my video, and my favorite Panigale is the 1199 Superleggera, so here you go. The visual appeal of the Ducati 916 turned the motorcycle world on its head in the early 90s and it has stood the test of time magnificently. Today you will find bikes that look more contemporary, but you will struggle to discover many that cause such wonder upon their presentation. And what's even better, in contrast to pure bedroom posters, I'm looking at you Lamborghini Countach, this one actually works. Now what do you think? Is the Ducati 916 the best looking superbike ever made or do you prefer the design of the 999, the Panigale or the F4? And why do you think Italians are so good at this? If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, 
hit the subscribe button. If there's anything else 916 you want me to make a video of, tell me in the comments below. Donny Desmo, out. Year after year, the Ducati 916 is voted one of the best looking motorcycles ever made. The Ducati Red, which will become symbolic for the company as a whole, and I always forget that, is super exclusive, single cylinder race bike, really less visible. If you look at its predecessors, the 851 and the 888, you will already... <laughs> The stroke of genius the Tamburini applied was drawing the lines of his bike along the shapes of the woman. A woman. <laughs> but I don't think that's right. I think I forgot something. The stroke of genius the Tamburini applied was to draw the lines of his bike along the shapes of the woman. Ah, a woman. What woman? Trying to sum up the impact this design had is like looking up. Uh, look. <laughs> Just continue. Today, you will find bikes that are faster and that look more contemporary, but you will struggle to find struggle. The visual appeal of the Ducati 916 turned the motorcycle world on its head in the early 90s. And I just got distracted.